Hello everyone, my name is Anand Singhran and I'm going to walk you through how you can build and run your GraphQL API using a declarative approach. And with that approach, you actually build the GraphQL API faster and it runs cheaper and in fact is better. That's what we are doing at Step Set. So GraphQL of course is cool and great and I'm sure that many of you are fans of it, but how do you actually do it right? You've got to focus on both being able to build it properly, where you have to understand resolvers and backends and other things, but also you've got to be able to deploy it and scale it and, and make it secure it and, and do the right performance and everything else. And the question that you've got to answer for yourself is what skills are needed in order to make all of this work? And are you going to acquire those skills or uh, you will let the system actually handle many of those for you? And as you guessed, at StepZen, we try to take care of many of these issues for you. So to, just to kind of contrast, just to kind of walk you through how we actually approach it, imagine that you're building an e-commerce uh, GraphQL API that is able to give some customer and order details and in order to personalize, also give the weather. And uh, in order to execute this GraphQL query, you have to really walk the edges to be able to go from customer to the weather and everything else. Now, if you pick up your favorite uh, GraphQL library in your language, whether it's Java or JavaScript or Golang or whatever else it is, in effect, what you're doing is you are attaching small little programs, which are resolvers that tell the system how to actually execute these edges. Now, these programs are black boxes because they are not really understood by the, the GraphQL engine. All it's doing is calling these programs and executing them in the order, and therefore really doesn't understand what these programs do or program snippets do. And therefore, you have to take care of all the things around it, like performance and optimization and security and everything else. So, so that's how all the traditional GraphQL libraries work. We take a slightly different approach. In our approach, you are actually declaring what these edges are. You are saying that customer will get resolved using a REST call to an endpoint, or delivery will get resolved in the same way to go from customer to orders. You'll actually issue a query on orders using some parameters from customer, and we call that as, as an at materializer directive. And then you go, and go from orders to and get details of order using a database query. So each query, each edge is resolved by a directive, which is completely understood by steps in. And the net of it is, of course, as you can see, you write much simpler code, but you also write more correct code, and you're just able to assemble the piece path. But equally importantly, because we actually understand what these directives are, we are able to do the performance optimization, security, and deployment. So, so you end up acquiring far fewer skills in order to actually get your GraphQL right. So let's, let's get started to kind of show you. I'm going to show you a finished endpoint and then build parts of it. I'm going to build the, um, the uh, open weather mark part of it using uh, kind of a REST directive. And then I'll just kind of show you a bit about how it will be done in, in, in the database. But to keep this demo short, I'm not going to give you all the details with respect to the, the order. And then, of course, you'll see how easy it is to kind of compose all of these things. So imagine that you're building a website, as I pointed out, where you've got some customer details and uh, some delivery details. And also, you're, you're trying to pick up the weather. Not that you'll actually display the weather, but let's say that you want to determine the weather in order to be able to personalize something. Now, uh, for this to actually work, you are going to be executing against some GraphQL endpoint such as this, uh, as I told you, and here's this GraphQL endpoint that that particular web page goes and executes against, and it gets information about the customer, in this case from Airtable and order from MySQL and goes to UPS and DHL all live and gets the weather information. And all of this is actually running in in the steps and cloud here on anand.stepzen.net, et cetera, et cetera. But we also conveniently provide you with a local proxy so that you can actually do a lot of your test and development out there. So, so the code behind it is very simple. It is really a set of, of the snippets that are kind of assembled together. So you've got a customer snippet, an order snippet, uh, a weather snippet. A customer snippet is really just coming from making an at rest call, in this case, to Airtable. The order snippet is coming from an at-rest call from, from MySQL. And then they're all pulled together in, in a manifest file. And that's a manifest file that actually gets, gets deployed. So, and, and all the linking and, and connections happen uh, very trivially. I'm not going to get into all of these details in, in this kind of quick demo. So let's go build the weather part of this. So 
we'll, we'll start with a clean file. Assume that, that you've got a, a curl call that you can make to a backend. That's all you know for now, and that's all we know for now. So all you do is you wrapper that curl call okay, with whatever constants you have, et cetera, et cetera, into a uh, GraphQL wrapper. Since we don't know what the curl call returns, we'll just assume for now that it returns uh, a JSON. And we are saying that there's a query called OWM. And uh, it, take, it, is, it is calling this endpoint. And just to kind of make sure that I get it right, uh, I put it there. And that's it. So I have created a, a GraphQL query that is telling StepZen to call this endpoint, obviously with all the constants and all that stuff, which we'll, we'll uh, take care of later on. And let's let's uh, save this file, and then let's go and execute steps and start. Okay, and what steps and start will do is it will take that just these five lines of code and create a GraphQL endpoint and deploy that GraphQL endpoint. Okay, and and let's let's go and uh, see what really happens here, and let's go and execute this. So so with those five lines of code. You gave, gave us a curl call, you wrappered it, and, and we produced a GraphQL endpoint that's running on this HTTPS anunstepzen.net API build run. And we provide a local proxy. And as you can see, you had to do nothing. And this actually API is protected by an API key and everything else. Now, of course, the beauty of GraphQL is that you actually can take those various piece paths and really assemble those piece paths. You can actually dig into those piece paths as opposed to the JSON together. No issues at all. Just copy the JSON response, uh, feed it into a tool that we have created called JSON to SDL, convert it. You get an SDL out of it. And, and now you just tag that SDL at the bottom. And instead of returning JSON, you return the root of, of that, that SDL. And now let's go in and, and save it. And we'll again watch it and we'll deploy it. And again, we'll deploy it to the cloud with a local proxy here. And let's see what happens. And now let's kind of rerun this. And now you've got all the fields of OWM, Open Weather Map, available to you. And you can, for example, fetch the temperature. And the lats and longs that I gave you were for, for Santa Clara, where I am. And the current temperature is 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Awesome. So you saw that just with a couple of lines of code, give us a curl call. And you're able to generate a full working uh, GraphQL API and able to extract parts of it. And of course, let me show you one last trick here. And of course, there are many other things to be done. But you don't want this API to actually just take constants. You obviously want this API to be able to take parameters. And all you do is, is add, add parameters, in this case of type float and longitude of type float. And let's again save it. And again, we watch it, and now this new API gets deployed without you having to do anything. And uh, now when I kind of reload this, suddenly you've got lats and longs associated with it. So let's give, give a lat of the same lat as I had before, but now as a parameter, and, and run this. And uh, there it is. It's gone and executed. It's gotten a bit uh, warmer since we uh, last ran the query. But, but that's... Uh, that's basically it. So it's it's as simple as you pointing us to a backend and through a series of small steps, you get a working GraphQL API uh, that is uh, that is deployed in the cloud and protected. Now, of course, uh, as I told you, orders came from, from MySQL. I'm not going to actually run through this because I'll have to kind of copy and paste some, some things. But all you do is step then import MySQL. And we will actually ask for, uh, for what the uh, connectivity issues, issues are like what's your host, et cetera, et cetera. And when you run it, you get an uh, GraphQL, uh, you get all the order details as GraphQL endpoints. And therefore you get, you get something like that, what I just showed you before, which is uh, order being available in uh, against that MySQL database. Okay, awesome. So, so that's how you actually build the GraphQL API. Now, of course, uh, and, and kind of assemble it. So hopefully you all will realize that it's really, really easy to do. And then of course we take care of a lot of other things at runtime. We take care of parallelism, caching, and other things, and we just continuously enhance because we understand what the directives, what the connectors are, 
sorry, what the edges and resolvers are, and we are able to do all of those optimizations. And the question that you've got to ask for yourself is, are you going to do it yourself, or you let the system such as steps and do it for you? We also run it as a service, as, as you saw, and, and we are super proud of, of the service that we run so that, that you don't have to worry about anything. We take care of it. We run the Kubernetes uh, container in which your, uh, your endpoint is deployed. Uh, so, so as uh, hopefully you've, uh, it has become a bit clear for you that in order to get GraphQL right, you've got to do a lot of things. And with steps in, you basically assemble some piece parts quickly, and then we take care of many other things for you. Whereas if you're going to do it on your own, you have to then go and, and write code and write libraries and write everything else for you. So if you like what you saw, uh, you can see the difference for yourself. Sign up on stepsin.com and hope to see you there. Thank you very much.